Show others that you're proud to be a peace activist in the Blackstone Intelligence Network. For shirts, mugs, caps, and more, visit blackstone-intelligence.myshopify.com. Back on October 7th, President Trump announced, for the third time, that he was going to withdraw all U.S. troops from Syria. And not long after, for the third time, he rescinded his order. Due largely to pressure from Israel and from Zionist acolytes, including Senator Lindsey Graham, President Trump chose to simply relocate about 80% of the U.S. troops a two- to three-hour drive to the east in neighboring Iraq, where they will guard oil fields. The remaining 20% of the troops in Syria will be moved from the north to join the U.S. troops in southern Syria, along the border of Jordan, not far from Israel. President Trump said in a meeting with reporters yesterday that Israel had specifically asked him to keep U.S. troops in Syria, which he agreed to do. They too will be used to guard oil. Oil plays a central role in the geopolitics of the Middle East. We must remember that the Anglo-American New World Order, which was established after World War II, accomplishes its goal of geopolitical conquest by toppling regimes and plundering the lucrative resources of the native populations. Back when President George W. Bush announced a global war on terror, what he was really doing was ceding control of the United States over to the New World Order to achieve its geopolitical ambitions. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. These are opening stages of what will be a broad and concerted campaign. We come to Iraq with respect for its citizens, for their great civilization, and for the religious faiths they practice. We have no ambition in Iraq except to remove a threat and restore control of that country to its own people. I know that the families of our military are praying that all those who serve will return safely and soon. Millions of Americans are praying with you for the safety of your loved ones and for the protection of the innocent. For your sacrifice, you have the gratitude and respect of the American people. And you can know that our forces will be coming home as soon as their work is done. Our nation enters this conflict reluctantly Yet our purpose is sure. The people of the United States and our friends and allies will not live at the mercy of an outlaw regime that threatens the peace with weapons of mass murder. We will meet that threat now with our Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines so that we do not have to meet it later with armies of firefighters and police and doctors on the streets of our cities. My fellow citizens, the dangers to our country and the world will be overcome. We will pass through this time of peril and carry on the work of peace. We will defend our freedom. We will bring freedom to others and we will prevail. May God bless our country and all who defend her.
the war on terror is actually a war of terror, a war that is waged against any world leader who opposes the efforts of the international banking cabal and their subsidiaries, the oil giants, the armaments industry, and the Western intelligence agencies. Donald Trump has always supported the agenda of the New World Order. Stealing the oil of the Middle East for the benefit of these Western oil corporations has always been a goal of Donald Trump. I said to my wife, I said, you know, I got to tell him about this plan. I'm going to have no choice because otherwise I'm not going to win. People are thinking like I don't have a plan. I hate doing it. So I'm on one of the shows and I said, look, ISIS is making a tremendous amount of money because they have certain oil camps, right? They have certain areas of oil that they took away. They have some in Syria, some in Iraq. I would bomb the shit out of them. I would just bomb those suckers. And that's right, I'd blow up the pipes, I'd blow up the refi, I'd blow up every single inch, there would be nothing left. And you know what? You'll get Exxon to come in there in two months. You ever see these guys, how good they are, the great oil companies? They'll rebuild that sucker brand new, it'll be beautiful. And I'd ring it, and I'd take the oil. And I said, I'll take the oil. <laughs> ISIS is making millions of dollars a week millions of dollars with oil now they're also getting money from saudi arabia can you believe it they're getting money from other people as you just heard when donald trump was still a candidate he recognized how awful it was that saudi arabia was financing isis but the first foreign trip that president trump made after taking office was to saudi arabia where he literally bowed down in front of the saudi king and on behalf of the military industrial complex gave the saudis the biggest weapons package in world history on the campaign trail candidate trump talked about how awful it was that the saudis helped to finance the september 11th attacks but just last week the president announced that he is sending up to 3,000 more U.S. troops to Saudi Arabia to act as bodyguards for the Saudi regime and its oil fields. These are not the behaviors of someone who is non-interventionist or who is America first. If Marvel or DC Comics were to sketch out a story about an evil political leader who conspires secretly with a diabolical network, something like Hydra, with spies and crony corporations seeking to overthrow entire nations, that story would be indistinguishable from the real-life actions of President Donald Trump. Invading other nations who have done us no harm for the purpose of stealing their oil to enrich ourselves and our Western corporations and the bankers who finance them is a breathtaking act of consummate evil. It is immoral. It is unchristian. And we should be repudiating these schemes, not cheering for them as they are brazenly blurted out in campaign rallies. If you agree, please share this video. For the Blackstone Intelligence Network, I'm Jake Morfonios. If you appreciate hard-hitting investigative journalism that you won't get from the mainstream media, then please support Jake's research and analysis at patreon.com forward slash endtimesnewsreport, paypal.me forward slash endtimesnewsreport, or send a check or money order to Jake Morphonios, P.O. Box 1333, Kernersville, North Carolina 27285.